Andrew McCaw, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with my good friend, my buddy, my pal, Gary Cully. Gary, first and foremost, my man, how's things? How's life? Oh, good, pal. Yeah, I'm just, uh, like I said to you before we start recording, keeping quiet. I'm in the gym, keeping my head down. Um, just got a fight day announced, like we just said there today. So, uh, yeah, excited. Um, excited to get back. June 25th is a fight day. Like, as if we planned that, but I didn't know that was getting announced today. It just so happened that it was perfect timing. So The stars are lying. The stars are lying, as always, with me and you, my man. Um, <laughs> yes. June, June 25th, but you said you've been quiet. You've been head down in the gym. I take it you've just been working hard because you are the WBO European champion. You're doing all the right things. I mean, your toughest test today was um, the Kazakh there. I forgot his name, too. Forgive me. Um, Podolchikov. Podolchikov, that's Victor it. Podolchikov. Um, yeah. He was your toughest test today. You've done him in, in, in a round or whatever. But June 25th, what can we expect? What kind of opponent can we expect uh, you to face? Um, I'm fighting an Italian guy, Giuseppe, Giuseppe Garafa, I think his name is. Right. Um, yeah, he's he's coming off a good win. He holds a couple of titles as well, so he'll be coming to to try and take my title off me, which is uh, which is always what I want. Somebody who comes to win and somebody who's gonna challenge me. Um, so yeah, a good a good learning fight here and um, defending my title, obviously, and then keep moving up the MWBO rankings and um. Yeah, to try and close in on the number one spot in the next 18 months time. See, when you look at the lightweight division, like I say, man, we, we, we've spoken about it on numerous occasions that oh, I mean, you're probably getting tired of it, that being six foot two and, and 135 pounds is kind of like a freaking nature type thing and you're southpaw and you're a slick fighter you, and obviously you've proven in your last two fights that you can bang a little bit. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You're, you're knocking guys out. So, you're talking about the next 18 months. Are you looking to get like this title shot within the eight, well, number one spot within the next 18 months? Yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, uh, things have slowed down a bit since COVID started, but um, I'll be hoping to get this fight out of the way, defend my title, move up a little bit more in the rankings, and then maybe one, maybe two fights off for a world title eliminator then. So maybe time scale, yeah, 12 to 18 months, I would imagine, being realistic. Um, I could say... I could say six to twelve months, but being real realistic with the the current way things are going and stuff, I, I reckon it's going to be twelve to eighteen months. But um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to to getting back in the ring and starting to to climb the rankings even more and, and close in on the number one spot. Like I said, talk to you about the number one spot then, Teofimo Lopez. I mean, who even has the number one spot? I don't know who's who's uh, number one. Uh, well, George Campos. I think George Combosa is one of his mandatories, I think, but I don't know from which organisation. Yeah, that's right, IBF, yeah. IBF, yeah. yeah. So, um, he, he's ticking him off, he's doing what he needs to do. But, I mean, if you hold all the belts, you've got four four mandatories to face, do you know what I mean? So, what's your yeah. thoughts on yeah. Lopez and, and, and George Combosa's then? That's next weekend, I believe. I think it's it's June anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I rate I rate Lopez highly. I do, I really do rate Lopez highly. Um I seen Cambosa's last fight against Selby and that's the only fight I've seen of him. But from what I've seen, he's a really, really good fighter as well. So it's gonna be an interesting fight. Um I'll obviously be watching it closely and um yeah, I think I think Lopez will um will beat Cambosa and I think he could probably move up to one forty after and vacate or will he stay around for a for a big fight with Haney, one or the other. But um, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to get there, uh, just before um before Lopez decides to move up because I don't see he has I don't think he has long left at one three five. It's interesting. But I'd say, like to get up there. Uh, sorry, sorry. Say again. I, I said I'm so, sorry to cut you off there, but I was, I was interested in what you said there when you said moving up to one forty because he's been calling out Josh Taylor as soon as Josh won his fight. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? That's a good fight. Um, I think. Josh beats Lopez. Um, I probably don't. I don't think Josh has long left at one forty either. Though he's probably going up to one forty seven quite soon, is he? Yeah. So uh, that's probably why TFM was calling him out because he knows that as well, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, they like to make noise and they know nothing's going to happen. But no, I think I think I I really really rate Josh. Um, I learn lots from him. I watch him all the time. I think he's an animal inside the ring. Um, yeah. So. For that one, I'd have to go with Josh Taylor. Um, for Lopez and Cambosa, I'm going with, I'm going with Lopez. And I, I think Lopez could possibly have one fight left after Cambosa. Um, if that, 
if he's not going to just move up straight away and vacate all the belts. Well, it's the Heaney fight we want to see, I, I think, between because there's this talk about the undisputed championship and people saying you're not undisputed because Heaney's the WBC champion, because Lomachenko is the franchise. I mean, it's the WBC's fault. They've, they've created this monster and they've created this mess. But Yeah, for sure. I think that we, to be undisputed, you probably do but you have to face Devin Haney, even though you did beat Lomachenko, which is frustrating. It's annoying for Lopez because I, I do call him the undisputed and I do think he's the undisputed, but then there's somebody else with a belt, so um, he he, he kind of has to be Haney before he calls himself. But just to put it to bed, I think, just to put it to bed because obviously there's always going to be an asterisk over uh, him being undisputed. Like I said, I call him undisputed. I think he is undisputed. He beat Lomachenko, who was a uh, Pound for pound number one and had all the belts, but look, I think he he needs to be Haney to put it to bed once and for all. Like I said, it's the WBC's fault, man. They call they call Haney the WBC world champion, but they also say that uh, Lopez is undisputed. So there's two WBC yeah. champions right now. It has to yeah, be. So, it's, so let's it's, get that it's one. It's a bit of a strange one, but definitely. Well, let's talk about that fight itself. Is that a fight? Obviously, you being in the one thirty five pound division. You're a boxing fan yourself. I th- I'm guessing that you want to see that fight, Haney Lopez. Of course, yeah. I want to see all the big fights. Um, I think that's a great fight as well. I really rate Haney. I rate, uh, like I said, I rate Lopez as well. So two of the best in the division fighting. That's what everybody wants to see, I think, is is the, the top guys in the divisions fighting each other. And I think that's what we need to see more of in boxing. Let's talk about Haney then. Did you watch his fight against Linares? Yes. Thoughts? Impressive. He's good. Um, he's, he, I've said this before on interviews to you. He's he's really good at rating, but he's beatable. Um, he's definitely beatable. But that's the same with everybody. Everybody has two arms, two legs. They're all beatable. Can you beat him, Gary? Yes, of course. Every day of the week. Twice on a Sunday. <laughs> that's only a matter of time. But, look, people probably won't believe it when, when this interview goes out. But, look, just give me time. Um, them fights, them fights are just on the horizon, and um, I'm probably like I said a couple of minutes ago, one, two, possibly three max fights away from uh, from world title eliminators and from them big fights. So it's only a matter of time before they come for me as well. So we've seen like it's not unrealistic for you to say to get these big fights because we have seen Luke Keeler, a gym mate of yours, become WBO European champion and then get the, the crack at the world title within two. Yeah, years. do you know what I mean? So two fights not- there. Exactly. So it's not unrealistic to say Gary Kelly in two fights, three fights time, you can get that shot at that world title, is it? No, of course. That's why we fight for these WBO European. It gives you a top 15 ranking with the WBO. So I won this belt in March. I'm up to 12 with the WBO now. So like you said, it's it's possibly it's it's one one fight to defend my title now and um, then fight somebody a little bit higher ranked than me. And you're, you're within touching distance then of a shot. Um, Either a voluntary or get yourself into mandatory position, but it's definitely not far away. That's why we, uh, that's why these WBO European titles are, are nice to pick up because they give you a good ranking with with WBO. I mean, like you, you we last, I think the last interview we did was when you beat Korotchkov, and you said that the, the you're making. I, I said the one thirty five, the lightweight division is a sexy division, and you said I make it sexier. You still think yeah. it's a sexy division? Yes, it is. It's it's the sexiest division in boxing. <laughs> for sure, I don't think I don't think anybody disagrees with that either. Um, it's got it's got Davis, it's got Haney, it's got Lopez, it's got me, Garcia, it's got uh, Garcia. Garcia's on the way back, yeah, yeah. After a bit of time out, so there's so many big fights to be made there. And like I said, I think we just need to see. Like when I when I get up there, I'll fight any of the top them four guys that I named with myself there. I'll fight any of them. But I feel like with the four of them guys up there, will they fight each other? Will we ever see them fight? It's a bit like the it's a bit like the Joshua and Fury thing. Will we ever see them fight? Um, I think we need to see more of it. The top guys in every division fighting each other because that's what the fans want to see, and ultimately that's what boxing is about. When you look at the four champ, the four guys at the top, then which one would, which one caters to you the best in terms of stylistically, and one that you believe that you can beat to become world champion? Like. Like I said a second ago, everybody has two arms, two legs. I think I can beat every one of them, um, especially because my style, 
I've got all the attributes. I'm like you said at the start. You know, I'm six foot two. I'm a southpaw. I'm a 135 pounds. I can bang. So I think it's my style that people need to need to uh, worry about. I don't need to worry about anybody else's style because I I've, I've seen all different styles. I I am the one that with all the attributes here. So um, when I get in that position, I believe any one of them I can beat. Like it's uh, it's just a matter of time to see who's there when I get there, what fights are made, what what fights make business sense. But um, I believe any, any one of the top four I'll be looking for. What kind of name do you need um, to get into that position? Do you need like a Luke Campbell, somebody like that to to, to beat and then get into that, that top, to face these guys? Do you need a big name like that? Yeah, for sure. I, I think you need that for... One to prove yourself to to the public and to the to the fans that that you're legitimate, and um, I all you also need to prove to yourself, and you need to you need to be in the trenches and um, have a couple of rounds where you're kind of blowing, where you're kind of you're learning new things in there. It's not all going your way. Um, somebody who's been there and done it before. I've obviously not been there. I've had twelve fights, forty something rounds. I'm I'm very inexperienced right now, but um, I believe I've got the talent. I just need to to gain that little bit of experience. So I probably need, yeah, like somebody who's been there and done it, a, a Gamboa, a Linares, somebody along those lines um, who's who's probably seen their peak and they're on the way down. Um, and, you, and you catch them at the Ricky, Ricky Bonds? Say again? Ricky Bonds? We've said that before. We've said that before, yeah. That's, that's a possibility. Um, we don't know what Ricky's doing at the moment. He's, of he's actually nothing got, against Ricky he's Bonds. coach now for boxing Scotland, believe it or not. So, uh, for boxing so, Scotland, yeah, for the, the national setup, yeah, yeah, the national setup. So nice. that's a good look nice there. But I, I think he still wants to have one more fight. So who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Some someone like that who's been there, who's done it. Like you know what I mean? You're going to gain so much experience from them fights. So, um, not just Ricky Barnes, but like I said, anybody who's who's been there and done it and have has got that experience. But guy, I want to just step away from boxing, man. What's for the tattoos, brother, man? Like, have you got any space left? What's going on? Oh man. What's the what's the new one? Every time, every time, every time I get a new one, I say I'm finished. And then, <laughs> what do you think? A couple of weeks later, I get the itch again. Just stay away from the face, mate. Don't go near the yeah, face. Yeah, man, I won't go near. I said when I finish, I started the stomach there. Yeah, so as soon as I finish the stomach, I think I'm finished for good. Um, I'm just I'm, I am past the point now of uh, you know when you're when you first start them where you're a little bit younger and they're cool and you you get a couple and they're cool and then like. I started them on my arms and then I seen a little bit of blank space. So, right, I need to fill that space. And then all of a sudden I had a sleeve. Then all of a sudden I started the next arm, yeah, and I had two sleeves. Then I had my chest done. Um, so, now it's gone past the cool point for me now. It's just, it's a bit of an effort to go and get them done. But I have a couple <laughs> of pieces started that I need to get finished. Once I get them finished, I'm done. Yeah. Done, until I have kids at least. Yeah, well, listen, you won't have the stretch marks, so you're lucky about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, finally, before I let you go, June 25th, mate, what, I mean, last two fights we've spoke about how you just you've went in there, you've done a demolition job. Can we expect the same on June twenty fifth? Yeah, well, like every 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 time I step in the ring, I try and go one better than the last time. So after the last after Katachi got, I took a week off. I was straight back in the gym. I'm always in the gym. I'm always trying to improve. I'm always trying to learn. So um, yeah, I'm I'm not saying what's going to happen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But I always I always try and um, improve on my last performance. So. Yeah, you can expect a better performance than the last time. If that's, if we can top that, that's what I'm planning to do. Well, you got to knock them out in ten seconds then, because you, that's the only way. Yes, <laughs> that's the only way I can top it. Exactly, right, Gary. Fingers crossed. I'll be at that show in Bolton, so I'll definitely see you at the end of the month if I'm there. If not, um, good luck, my man, and I'll catch up with you soon. But as always, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you, brother, man. I'm, I'm glad to see you doing well. Thank you so much, Andy. Thanks for your time as well, Pat. And I will, uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you in Bolton. Definitely. Uh, Gary, as always, pleasure, brother. Thank you. Cheers, man. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.